guys, it's Boca here from Gigi's Fabric Shop, home of Janome Junkies and Juki Junkies. Check out both of those channels if you are a happy owner of both. But today I am following up on the last HD9 video that we did and we're gonna jump into um, how to set the machine up. So how to wind a bob and how to properly thread the machine so that way you can be set up for success. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you both threading ways. So the how to thread the machine with a lightweight thread and then how to thread it with like an industrial style thread. Just so you guys know, since our channel is so new and stuff and if you've just learned about us we carry the Filtech brand of thread exclusively here so the glide thread all right glide 40 is a beautiful luscious polyester thread that is 40 weight and it's spectacular I mean we are so addicted to it and we love it so much it has a beautiful shine as you can see so that's what I'm going to be demoing today um check out the website check out Juki Junkies for all the other threads that we have too but they have lots of other lines like they have a 100% cotton thread this is the Cairo quilt okay and then we also do have an industrial style thread that I'm going to show you how to thread this machine with this as well. So let's hop into how to wind the bobbin first. Alrighty, so we are going to wind the bobbin and I'm going in with the Glide 40 in the beautiful color linen. It's a really nice kind of off shade cream, um, not too yellowy. It's really, really nice. Um, so I'm going to pop it back here on the thread stand and I'm going to take my thread and I'm going to pull it front back to front. And this is always going to be step number one, no matter if you're doing the bobbin or if you're threading the machine. All right. So next I'm going to take my thread and really hold it nice and tight and just pop it underneath this little hook all right I'm going to go over to the tension little disc that looks like a little screw and I'm coming from the back to the front and I want to make sure that I'm getting really in there like I'm flossing the machine that is the goal here really make sure we're getting in there because if you're not in that disc all the way you're not going to get pretty uh tension on your bobbin okay so I want to make sure it's nice and tight I like to hold everything with both hands okay Next, I'm gonna take my um, bobbin and I'm going to take the thread and I'm gonna slide it from underneath, okay? Take it from underneath and pull it up to the top like so, okay? And then drop it into place. So I'm gonna give it a little, oop, I knew that was gonna happen. <laughs> I'm gonna give it a little tug here. Let me do that one more time. Pulling from underneath to the opposite side. Doing this left-handed, that's probably why I'm not able to do it's this. It's always so. harder when the camera's watching. I know, everything's always so much more intimidating. So just wanna make sure I'm in there. That's the main goal of why I'm pulling things through, making sure it's nice and swift, okay? So I'm gonna have a grip of the tail and I'm gonna engage my bobbin winder. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure I'm holding my thread up because if you're holding it down here, there's a very good chance it's gonna get wrapped around. I've seen it a lot when I'm training customers. Next, you're gonna hit the little bobbin um, button right here and that's going to engage the independent bobbin winder. So going to start once it kind of gets a nice little grip okay I'm going to stop it and I'm going to trim like so and then I'm just going to let it ride out as you hear it is so quiet yeah it is really really very quiet. very quiet and it is feeding up and down evenly as we go you see how perfectly wound that is it's just doing exactly what it's supposed to all right and and this is giving us good tension for the sole reason of making sure that we got into this disc right here all right so once it's all done it's going to be clutch it's almost done almost done and voila it is all done and perfectly wound so i'm going to trim this pull it up and look at that bobbin it is so full it is super nice and even and if I smush it with my fingers it's not going anywhere I always call this the smush test if it doesn't have any give and it's really nicely wound just like this that means your bobbin tension is perfect if you squish this and it's moving around there's loops you will experience tension issues so this is a perfectly wound bobbin y'all what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take my bobbin case and we're going to place it in there. I'm going to get my screw ready because I just want to make sure I, to I show you guys how to set the bobbin tension on here. Okay, so there's a little screw right here that gets adjusted for bobbin tension. So let me go grab that really quickly and then I'll show you how to put this guy in here. So I have my perfectly wound bobbin that we just did and the bobbin case. You will notice that the bobbin case on the Janome HD9 Black Edition may be different than your white one at home. There is two versions of the machine. So they just recently remodeled a couple things on the machine including the bobbin case um, so some bobbin cases for the white 
uh, HD9 are kind of like half of this size. The threading is really all in all going to be very, very similar. Not much different, but it does, it is going to look a little different if you have yours at home, but it's the same core idea. All right. So we're going to take our bobbin. Okay. And we're going to place it in with the thread falling from the right side, meaning that when you spin it, that little window is going to spin clockwise. Okay. So we're just gonna turn it to the side, take our thread, and it's going to slip right in. Let, it, let that focus, all right, slip right into that crack. And then it's going to go up and right down, just like that. And you'll kind of hear, you'll kind of feel some resistance. I always tell customers, you'll know when it's right, when there's like this little dip right here when you're putting it in. If you put it the wrong way and the thread's falling from the right side, it just kind of goes straight down, whereas it has this little dip when it's in there properly, all right? Now we're gonna do a good old little bobbin test where I place it in my hand like so. And if I pick it up and I give it a little drop, if it falls just like that, and, and I'm not doing a very strong wiggle, I'm not doing anything crazy, I'm just pulling it up, dropping, and if it's moving down just like that, but if I don't wiggle it, it sits up right like this. This is really, really nice tension. I mean, I don't even have to do anything to this. Now, if you pull yours up and you're dropping it, it's a lot of resistance. That means you have to loosen your bobbin tension up. Or if you're sitting here and you're holding it, it's just slipping, 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 and nothing is, is coming off of your hand, that means it is way too loose. How you make adjustments to that is going to be taking the little t uh, little screw that you get with this machine. So you get two, you get a really, really small one like this, and then there's one that's a little bigger. You're just gonna slide it right here onto that first little screw. Okay, let that focus right there, that first little screw, okay? And if you go to the left, you're going to loosen it. If you go to the right, you're going to tighten it. When we loosen and tighten the bobbin case, we wanna make sure we're moving in very small increments, increments of five, okay? So like if you loosen it, that would be a good place to start. If you're gonna tighten it, I'm gonna put it back to just where it was. That would be a good turn. So we're moving in like five to 10 minute increments. We're not making huge adjustments to this. And I would also highly encourage if you have, um, if you're planning on working with different weights of thread, like from like industrial to fine thread like this, that you have two bobbin cases on hand because fluctuating with uh, tension that much could result in a broken bobbin case. So I would definitely encourage you guys to get a separate one, like a spare one. All right, placing the bobbin in is very simple. This top part where we can see the thread, this is where the needle is coming down and hooking and making those loops. So this part has to be facing up and the little bar, which I call this the door. Okay, I always call this, I refer to this as a door. This door is only when you're taking the bobbin out, the bobbin case out of the machine. You're gonna pull this and pull it out. When you're placing it in, you're not gonna use this. You have to hold the whole case and place it in. So let me show you guys. Actually, I just like to pull this out so I have like, better control okay plus for a video yeah so it's just gonna slide in here okay and you have to make sure it's horizontal that door is nice and horizontal and once it's in there okay you're gonna be able to take your thumb and give it a snap I promise you if you use the door when you're placing it inside the machine you are not gonna hear a snap now when I'm taking it out I will use the door to help me take it out a lot easier and then when I place it back in Okay, I'm just gonna, ta-da, just like that. And I know it's in there secured exactly where it needs to be. You have to hear the snap to make sure that it's in there properly. So now let's hit how to thread the machine. We're gonna do the threading for like regular weight thread. So 60, 40, 50, you know, just kind of like piecing thread. We're not, I'm gonna show you guys how to do the industrial thread as well, but we're gonna start with the regular kind of piecing project, regular everyday thread. All right, we're gonna start with that. I wanna mention really quickly before we dove into that, um, I didn't really tell you guys how long to keep a thread tail out. So um, you wanna make sure it's not too, too long. So like this would definitely be way too long. I would keep it around four to five inches. This would be a perfect length for the machine to be able to loop it up with no problem. So leave your thread tail about four to five inches um, when you're placing it inside. Don't keep it too short because it's not gonna be able to make, it's not gonna be able to loop it up, but four to five is a very safe place. All right, so now let's dive into the threading of the machine, all right? So like I said, we're always gonna start from the back. We're always gonna take our thread and we're going to just bring it from the back to the front in this little guide. And there's two guides, one for this cone and one for this cone, all right? Next, we're going to take our thread, all right? And we're going to go to this first little unit right here. There's three little holes. We're gonna come to the first top one that's closest to us. And we're gonna come from the top to the bottom like that. Take the thread and wrap it around, skip over 
the third one and go into the last back one. Okay. Skip over the middle one. What did I say? Skip the last one? Third one, yeah. Oh, sorry. We're just going to skip over the middle one and then we're just going to go directly to the third one. Okay, so we're going to take that in there and push it out. Make sure it wraps around like so. Okay, so from the top to the bottom in the first hole, skipping the middle hole, wrapping around to the third one, doing the same thing. I can do it one more time for y'all since I kind of confused you with my word grammar here. <laughs> wrap around, skip the second, and go into there. And when she says wrap around, she's just going from the bottom and then going back up through the top. Exactly, she's just going like that. from it's the top wrapping on each around. Hole. She doesn't. She doesn't actually wrap it around the metal thing at all. There you go. That's it a good view for you guys to see. Yeah. All right, and I'm holding it again with two hands. I'm keeping my hands nice and tight, like I'm flossing my teeth. And I'm going to use my left hand to spring into this tension disc right here. You want to make sure that you're in the tension disc, like so. Okay, this one's very loose, so that one you'll always have an easy time working with. Here is um, some controversy as to how to thread this machine. I'm going to teach you guys to thread your machine with the presser foot up because it opens the disc right here to ensure that the thread gets into the right place. Personally, myself, I thread it all the time with my presser foot down because I floss the machine like I'm flossing my back molars and I make sure I feel everything, but that's just with time. So for you guys starting out to get comfortable, thread your machine with the presser foot up so that the tension disc is released and that it can slip in there very easily. So what I mean by when you're going from the right to the left, you're gonna go into this little tension disc right here. And then there is a spring right here. You see how I just snapped into that spring and it moves when you're sewing? Let's do that one more time. From the right to the left, pulling into the spring, okay? I know that I'm in that disc as best as I can possibly be. It's nice and open, there's no resistance. I'm gonna pull down and go around this little arm and then snap into place right here like that. I'm going to do a little needle down, needle up for myself so that way this little guy can be in the right position. That's also a perfect step for you guys when you're doing your needle thread or I'll talk about that when we get there again. But now we're just going to take our thread and we're going to go from the right to the left in here. Okay. Make sure it doesn't get wrapped around anything just like so. Snap it back into this position again. We're going to kind of get eye level now and put it into this first little thread guide right here. Okay, just like that. And then we're gonna put the presser foot down, okay? And when you do that, when you try to pull the thread through, you'll feel a lot of resistance because it is in the tension discs. When you open this, it slides with no problem. When you put it down, feeling resistance is normal and you should feel resistance, okay? There's another thread guide from the right side, okay? Like that. So from the right from the left. right side, there's a little one right here. So go from the right to the left to get into that. I always use my thumb to guide me. Okay, so it should get right there. What I was saying about needle down, needle up, it is very important to do that because it puts that needle threader, that needle in the perfect position so your needle threader works every single time. Remember that a needle threader does not work universally on every size needle and it does not work universally on every size thread. So if you are working with a very, very um, fine needle, anything smaller than an 8012, this is not gonna be able to thread it. If you are working with industrial thread, this is not gonna work. Um, that's just the rule of thumb here. So if you are working with anything bigger than an 8012 and you're working with a 40, uh, even a 50, even a 60, that it should work just fine. If it's not working and you've done everything imaginable, it's time to get it replaced because you've bent it out of place, okay? So now we're gonna take this and we're just gonna bring it down and it hugs around the needle, all right? I'm gonna use my left hand to bring the thread right around that little, it looks like little lips or like a duck beak. And I'm just gonna bring it down and to the uh, right, and there's a little kind of L-shaped like slot right here for the thread, all right? So I'm holding the thread with my left hand and I have my right hand still down on the needle threader. I'm going to let go of the, the needle threader with my right hand and simultaneously let go of the thread to evenly let go of the pressure. Did I pull it through? Oh, I'm at a weird angle, y'all, hold on. The goal is to not let not pull on the thread as you're threading it because if you pull on the thread as you're threading it, it's not going to loop through. You have to let go and release pressure at the same time in order for you not to have resistance. Okay, so needle is the pressure foot is up 
really easy resistance needle foot is the presser foot is down you see the resistance right there just keep that in mind that that is completely normal tucking it underneath there's a little thread cutter right here so we're just going to come back to front trim it makes it the perfect length in my opinion all right and we're basically ready to sew so that is how you thread this machine with a regular everyday thread all right now we're going to jump into how to thread the machine with a thick industrial like thread like the tech 70 um that i have here okay so let's dive into that Alrighty, guys now we're going to show you how to thread the machine and a little bit more speed just so you get a quick visual with not as much talking so remembering to skip that middle hole from the top to the bottom, from the top to the bottom, going around this tension disc from left to right, around this tension disc from right to left, almost all the way over, catching that spring underneath this bar into this little guide right here, clicking in there from the right to the left in that hole, making sure your thread only goes through there, clicking back into that spring, coming down to this guide right here from the left to the right, Clicking in there. I just put my presser foot down just so you guys know. Too. Presser foot down. Needle up, needle down. Getting ready for the needle threader. Go around those two little spring lip thingies underneath there. And perfect. Okay, so now we're moving on to a Tech 70. This is a bonded nylon thread. Um, this is a 70 Tech 70 weight uh, thread, so it has a very nice thickness to it. Definitely going to take your top stitching in bags and more heavy canvases and, and vinyls and projects like that. It's going to take to the next level. Um, so let's dive into it. Again, we're starting with putting our thread in the back and pulling it from the back to the front in this thread guide that's always step number one okay now we are going to make sure our presser foot is up all right and we're taking our thread and we're doing the same thing going to the first hole top to bottom wrapping it around avoiding the second hole and going into the third one in instances when you're working with a very slippery very thick thread then you would use all three but for this one this this will just do just fine with just the two we can talk about that in another video y'all but it's very very easy all right so we're gonna take our thread and we're gonna slip it into that tension disc just like we did next going into the second most important tension disc on the machine and hopping into that little arm all right going under this arm now this part of the machine is where it takes it to the next level okay so i'm going to poke it through from the right to the left and then you got to kind of tilt it up and there's another hole right there so it's just a nice clean straight shot okay so just like that then everything from there is really the same there is a little cutout right here for you that kind of guides you um so it just goes here the only thing that really changed is this part as well as not being able, not having to go through this part two times like we did because we didn't thread this part when we were working with a nice fine thread. So that's really the only thing that's changed is added this, subtracted one at time of this. As far as knowing what thread you can work with, okay, we're gonna put through the little thread guide and then the one closest to the needle, it's from the right to the left. Use your thumb to guide you, okay? Now, um, again, the needle threader is not gonna really work here, so I'm gonna have to thread it by eye. Now let's talk about limitations as far as uh, thread and needle combinations, okay? So the thickest needle you can use is going to be a size 18 needle okay and the really nice thing about this machine in particular is that it works with a it can work with regular home sewing needles but it also has a unique style of needles called the hlx5 which resemble and are built to resemble industrial style needles okay so they're not industrial needles but they mimic and are built like an industrial needle to help with those really heavy projects like vinyl canvas and things like that as far as the thread goes if you can get it to fit in that eye of that needle it is going to work so whatever you are working with as long as you can get it through the eye of the needle I'm not really even sure what kind of needle is on here right now because it's just fresh out the box but I had no problem getting it through so just like so tuck it underneath and then I would wind my bobbin of course because I would want it on the top and the bottom and that's really about it so I'm going to kind of do the same thing like we did for the first threading where we're just going to kind of zoom through it so you have a faster visual of how and what I just did all right so here it is. Always pull the thread from the bottom, y'all. Never pull the thread from the top because you want to go with the tension discs, not against it, not against it. Okay. So from here, one, two, like so, into this tension disc, into the most important one, into the arm, 
double arm, taking my thread, doing kind of like a straight shot up into both of those, all right? From the right to the left into this little pin. Snap it in, eye level. This is where I like to put the presser foot down, okay? And then we're gonna pull through here. And then I'm just gonna thread the needle with my eye. Just poke it through. Let's see if I can see. Are my eyes good today or are they a little foggy? Let's see. I did a good, oh, they're good today. Fabulous, all right. And that is that, y'all. That's how you would thread this machine with working with industrial thread. Um, that's the really cool thing. Like I said, she is very, very, very versatile from, from thick threads to fine threads to working with lace, organza, whatever your project may be. This machine is very, very versatile. It's beautiful. So um, if you're thinking about purchasing this machine, be happy to give us a call. We don't have a lot of these black editions in right now just because they are a limited release. Um, so if this machine is catching your eye and you're intrigued at how powerful and awesome this machine is, definitely check out the first one where I did the overview on the machine too. But feel free to give us a call. It's 813-661-9000. We are here to help you and make the right decision for you. So give us a call and we can walk you through it, tell you the pricing, all that fun stuff. Um, make sure you guys subscribe to our channel we will be posting a video every Sunday at 5, right? 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So make sure you look out for that. If you subscribe and like, it'll notify you when our videos post. So keep an eye out for that. Um, check the description for any links. I will link the threads for you. So if you guys want to get the threads, check out Glide. It is super addictive. I pinky promise you. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching today. And make sure you guys like and subscribe and comment below what's your favorite thing about this machine. Thank you so much. And I'll see you guys on the next video.